If you like our content, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get alerts when we introduce new videos. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to configure VLAN support for Ethernet ports on specific APs using the Unleashed user interface. As a note, at the time of this recording, only the Unleashed H320 and H510 wall plate APs provide Ethernet port VLAN configuration options. Another note is that if you are configuring 802.1x dynamic VLAN port settings, the mesh mode cannot be enabled on the system, so this feature would be used in specific situations where mesh is not required. For this demonstration, I'm using the Ruckus H510, which provides Wi-Fi and four Ethernet wired switch ports. In effect, this is a four-port switch with a trunk uplink over Ethernet and also Wi-Fi. So from my Unleashed dashboard, I'm going to go to my access points. I have three access points in here and I have an H510 that I've previously configured. So we're gonna go ahead and select that and I'm going to select edit. We have our general settings, we have our radio 2.4G settings and our 5G settings. I'm gonna leave those as default. Network settings. The tab that I'm really interested in for this video is the other tab. So under other, if I select that and I scroll down, you'll see that it gives me a picture of the H510. This is the WAN port, the Ethernet port, or the trunk uplink port. And then I have four ports, one through four, that I can configure. So if I scroll back up here, for example, LAN5 is the WAN port, and you'll notice here that I can't adjust that. LAN4 through LAN1, I could adjust those for a different type of port if I wanted to. I can also change the VLAN ID tag as well. So you might be asking, well, why would we want to do something like this? This can be used in areas where you want to deliver converged services in hospitality and residential locations, such as hotel guest rooms, student residence halls, apartments, and other MDU structures. It can connect wired network devices, such as IP TV set-top boxes, IP phones, smart TVs, network mini bars, printer scanners, or any other type of items while simultaneously providing dual band 802.11 AC Wi-Fi coverage. By setting up specific VLANs, you can also reduce the chances of rogue devices gaining access to your network. Now, as you can notice on this picture, we have three types of ports. We have trunk ports, access ports, and general ports. All three types are used to define how to manage the following two aspects of VLAN processing. Which VLANs are processed versus dropped and what do you do with untagged packets or in other words the native VLANs. So let's talk a little bit about the differences in the types of Ethernet ports. Trunk ports or links are required to pass VLAN information between access points and switches. The trunk port is a member of all the VLANs that exist on the AP or switch and carries traffic for all VLANs between switches. For a trunk port, the VLAN untag ID field is used to define the native VLAN, in this case, one, the VLAN into which the untagged ingress packets are placed upon arrival. If your network uses a different VLAN as the native VLAN, configure the AP trunk's port's VLAN untag ID with the native VLAN used throughout your network. In our case, on LAN 5, we have a trunk port. So for example, on LAN 5, which is our WAN port, which is our trunk port, the untag ID is one, but if you wanted to change your native VLAN to something else, for example, 10, you could do that. We'll just go ahead and keep it at one. The other four ports, LANs 1 through 4, can be configured as either trunk ports, access ports, or general ports. So let's talk a little bit about access ports. Access ports provide access to the network and can be configured as members of specific VLANs, thereby separating the traffic on these ports from traffic on other VLANs. Only one untagged VLAN is allowed by default. All access ports are set to untag or the native VLAN 1 by default. This means that all access ports belong to the same native VLAN and are part of a single broadcast domain. If configured as an access port, all untagged ingress traffic is sent to the configured untagged VLAN 
and all egress traffic is sent untagged. When untagged frames from a client arrive at the AP's access port, they are given an A22.1Q VLAN header with 1 before being passed onto the wired network. When VLAN 1 traffic arrives destined for the client, the VLAN tag is removed and it is sent as plain or untagged A22.11 traffic. When any tagged traffic other than VLAN 1 traffic arrives at the same access port, it is dropped rather than forwarded to the client. So in our example, we're going to select LAN 4 as access port. We're going to give it a, an untag ID of VLAN 10. Next, I'm going to set LAN 3 as a general port. General ports are user-defined ports that can have any combination of up to 20 VLAN IDs. So I'm going to put in 20 for my VLAN ID. They function similarly to trunk ports, except that where the trunk ports pass all VLAN traffic, general ports pass only the VLAN traffic that is defined by the user. So to configure this as a general port, I can put in an untagged ID of 20. Let's say, for example, for LAN 2, if I wanted to set that up as a general port, I could do that. I could put this, my VLAN tag could be 30, but if I wanted that to be supported on VLAN 1, 200, and 300, I would just separate those by a comma. So I can put those in there like that. Another function we can configure is using port base 802.1x. 802.1x authentication provides the ability to secure the network and optionally bind service policies for an authenticated user. As I mentioned earlier, 802.1 port settings are unavailable when mesh mode is enabled. Dynamic VLANs can be used to automatically and dynamically assign wireless clients to different wireless LANs based on radius attributes. This allows the network admins to fragment a network into tiered sections based on resource authorization. Users in an organization are then segmented into these dynamic VLANs based on the resources they can access. For dynamic VLAN requirements, I must have a radius server that's been configured and added to Unleashed and the wireless LAN authentication method must be set to 802.1x MAC address or 802.1x plus MAC address. So let's say, for example, that I want to take my LAN port 1. I'm going to have that be an access port. I'm going to put 50 for my untag ID. And now I'm going to scroll to the right here. And I want to enable dynamic VLAN. So I'm going to select authenticator MAC based and I'm going to tag the Enable Dynamic VLAN. Now, under the authentication server, I would have had to have picked a radius server that I had pre-configured. And under the accounting server, in this case, I don't have any selected. So now I've got my untagged access port. The untag is 50, and I'm going to put in a guest VLAN, and I'll just put in 50 over here for that. And it is now Enable Dynamic VLAN, and that is selected with my Authenticator MAC based, and now I'll press on OK to save it. So what I want to do now is go back to my admin and services. And under services, under AAA services, you'll see that I do have a radius server set up. Just to show you what that looks like, I'm going to go ahead and edit that. So I've given it a name, Awani Radius. It's a radius server. It has an IP address, a port number, and a shared secret and then some retry policies set down here. So this has to be configured prior to enabling the dynamic VLANs. So I'll click OK on that. As you can see in this video, you can configure VLAN support for Ethernet ports on specific Ruckus APs using the Unleashed user interface. Before configuring, you need to understand what you're trying to do before setting up the VLAN port configuration. As such, Ruckus has other resources available for more detailed information on this topic. When used properly, this is a very powerful Unleashed feature. Music